Welcome, welcome, very warm welcome. I am Abri Unicorn. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Um, getting straight down to the point, I would like to invite everyone who watches my channel to please, if you have an Instagram account, go on ahead and follow Black Femside US. Excuse me, I said US, Black Femside America. Uh, this is a woman who really keeps her finger on the pulse when it comes to um, homicides associated with uh, African-American women. Uh, so often we go under the radar for so many reasons, whether it's because our stories, our lives are not important enough to report on, uh, given the system of racism and white supremacy that we live in. But also we belong to a culture of people who at least a generation ago or by and large, you know, there's a lot of criminal activity and there is a lot of um, no snitching policies within the community. So it was really important for us not to um, tell on black men for abuse, other crimes and even murder. So I saw this and I wanted to share this because, um, well, I'll go ahead and play it for you. I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself and you'll see why I wanted to share this. So again, this is Black From Side America and I'm just gonna go on ahead and mute myself and play this audio for you. How many times do we hear that women out here I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. How many times do we hear that women out here dealing with all this abuse, abuse, abuse? I'm going to do the show on abuse next week because I'm tired of hearing this bull crap. I, sorry, I do not see women being abused. I, I don't see women, I don't see black women being physically abused. Never really have. I'm going to just say it. I never really have seen black women being abused. In my entire life, I have known of one woman, and that was one of my mother's friends back in the 70s, one. And she and her husband, or she and her men, they would fight each other, one. Emotional abuse, I, I will tell you, the emotional abuse comes from women to men, not men to women. I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. How many times do we hear that women out here dealing with all this abuse, abuse, abuse? I'm going to do the show on abuse next week because I'm tired of hearing this book. So there you have it, the color purpling of the black community. I actually think that that's what I'm going to go on ahead and call the title of this video, the color purpling of the black community. The color purple actually came out the year that I was born in 1985 and um, art, and I know this as a former actress, entertainer, spoken word artist, uh, writer, singer, dancer, art imitates reality. Now there are the things that are fantastical. There are the things that are, you know, the matrix type of thing also written by a black woman. However, the color purpling of the black community is a very interesting thing because I would posit to you right here and right now that every single black woman alive knows a Mr. character. It might not be her dad. It might not be her brother. It might not be her uncle, but she knows one. I would posit to you here and now, every black woman knows a Sealy. It may be her. It may be her sister, it may be her cousin, it may be her mom or her aunt. We all know a Sealy. I would posit to you right here, right now, we all know a Shug Avery, grew up with one, or I'm, I'm telling you, all of those characters. Part of the reason African-Americans do this thing culturally where we speak movie, Right. Where when a movie hits home so quick, so, so close and so hard, we say lines from that movie. Right. If the weather is bad, we as African-Americans will say it's going to rain on your head. Right. If we see, you know, an unattractive person or I mean, if you're a callous enough person, you know, instead of being like, nah, not my type, nah, you show is ugly. Right. We, this is what we do when a movie 
is accurate enough to describe the black experience is what we do, right? And you can take that from the color purple. You can put that into, I mean, coming to America, there are lines from the movie that we say when they hit close to home. So Kevin, he's calling this slander. So I would like to submit to you that um, because he said something that I found really interesting. OK, he said the only woman that he knew uh, who was being abused, well, they were hitting each other. Because men and women's bodies are made equally. Right. Well, well, they were fighting each other. So technically she wasn't a victim. You know, oftentimes black women, we will fight back. We don't just lay down and take it. We still don't win. And it's still an unfair fight. So if I'm a middle school kid and I get into a fight with uh, a graduating high school senior, well, they were fighting each other. Are you serious right now? Robin Gibbons and Mike Tyson, you know, well, they were fighting each other. Rihanna and Chris Brown, people tried to say, you know, Rihanna put hands on them, on, on, on Chris before he hit her. Well, they were fighting each other. Do you then not have the right to defend yourself from physical abuse? In order to make sure you are perceived and understood as the victim, do you not have the right to swing back? So I'm going to go on ahead and say today that when I was five years old, um, my dad, who did not work and who was a musician and was some long haired, light skinned, did I sing, I dance and all the B words want me do, married my mother and um, we had a Cadillac, right? Got me a Cadillac, Cadillac, Cadillac. Got me a Cadillac car, right? Where's that from? You want to know why every black person knows where that's from? Because when something hits close enough to home, like Dreamgirls does when it comes to cultural appropriation, we all know it. Okay, so we had a Cadillac and my dad wanted my mom to throw her money her heart and money into that Cadillac. And she said to herself, I have a family full of kids. I'm going to get a van. So all my babies and all my nieces and all my nephews can fit inside. And all those little kids that I deal with in the church can fit inside. My dad beat the hell out of my mother for getting that van. Now, we made jokes because my mom was able to scramble her five foot five self over to the phone and swing back at him. OK. But uh, make no mistake, when the police came over, my mother was holding a blue rag to her face. That was so covered in blood, it looked purple. And. We watched her, like he hit her so hard, there was a blood spatter, a spatter. So not just like blood running down your face, but a spatter onto a wall, like almost like as if you've, you've hit somebody with a bat. She had to wash her own blood off of the wall because we were all little kids who was gonna help her. There was a spot she missed, not from the blood she washed off of the wall, but from the blood she was leaking, okay? And um, I looked at it every day until we moved out of that house. I looked at it every day. That deep red van that we had, the license plate number was 363BPZ. Why am I 36 and I remember the license plate number of the car? I have PTSD, I have all kind of memory problems, but I remember that. I remember that we lived on a street called Howell in the Central District 
of Seattle. I remember that. Five-year-olds don't know their address. They're just learning their phone number. How do I remember? Because sometimes trauma will emblazon itself on your mind and it will never leave. Other times your brain will say you, you've reached a capacity and then it will leave. Uh, you know, you can black out and not remember what happened, right? I actually experienced both. Uh, my mom finally decided to call the cops. That wasn't the first domestic disturbance. It's just what I was old enough to remember. Okay. Um, all kinds of things ended up happening um, in her home. And my mom was just this uh, epitome of a pick me, epitome of a mammy, epitome of a high value handmaiden who was, I mean, if you're talking the 90s, making 25, 26, $28 an hour in the 90s, Oh, that's money. Even in a place like Seattle, that was money back in the early 90s. Cosmetologist, right? Um, so this guy gets up here with all of his, you know, over a million followers and says and calls us all liars. Cool thing about Black Femside America is this right here. So for all of you people who believe this man and who say that black women are not abused, I'm going to go ahead and read something for you really quick. <sighs> black Femside America says um, she apps this, uh, this man and says he and his followers are dangerous. This right here is why the CDC and National Intimate Partner and in Sexual Violence states Black women are more likely to die at the hands of an abuser. Black women experience domestic violence at exceedingly high rates than any other group of women, which is saying a lot because most of us don't tell, don't call, won't snitch. So imagine that which is unreported. Black women experience more severe forms of domestic violence once they were separated or divorced. Women between the ages of 18 and 24 are most likely to experience domestic violence. So when they tell you that you hit a wall at 25, this is why, because chances are your mind has matured to the point at 25, 26, 27, where you're like, nope, I don't want to do this anymore. So peep that age, th those ages and his rhetoric and juxtapose the two. Women between the ages of 18 and 24 are most likely to experience domestic violence, followed by teens between the ages of 11 and 17. This age pattern was observed among black women. In fact, they were uh, more than three times likely to experience domestic violence under the age of 30 than black women under the age of 40. Yet their first response is often not to report what they're experiencing, or if they do report, they later recant their stories. We're good for that. We're good for recanting. I've recanted. They also are less likely to visit shelters or receive services. Instead, many black women suffer in silence because that is what we are rewarded for in our community. So many black men, not the one that I'm with, but so many black men measure the worth of a woman, whether she's a good woman or not, by how much nonsense she can take. So if she can work three jobs, get cheated on, raise all her kids and be beaten on, she's a good woman. Do you hear me? The, the womanhood is based on how much can I put you through? How much can you suffer? Black women experience domestic violence at significantly higher rates than white women, but they tend to remain silent out of fear of the police force and a sense of duty to their race and culture. And then, of course, she says, F that, call the police. Uh, if you're in any immediate danger, 911 for anonymous confidential help. 24-7, please call the National Domestic Violence Hotline. I recommend calling the police, not these hotlines, because um, these hotlines are, um, they're just people doing their job. They're not necessarily committed to uh, making any kind of a change. So definitely call the police, run away, call a friend, have some kind of a abuse system set up because I mean, these hotlines will get to you, come out to see you maybe a day or two later, you know? 
So we're going to listen to this guy one more time and then just skip through this Instagram page so we can all determine right here, right now, whether this is a truthful man or a liar. So one more time. Here, here it is. Okay. I, sorry, I do not see women being abused. I, I don't see women, I don't see black women being physically abused. Never really have. I'm going to just say it. I never really have seen black women being abused. In my entire life, I have known of one woman, and that was one of my mother's friends back in the 70s. One. And she and her husband, she and her men, they would fight each other. One. Emotional abuse. I, I will tell you, the emotional abuse comes from women to men. Not men to women. And it's, I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. How many times do we hear that women out here dealing with all this abuse, abuse, abuse? I'm going to do the show on abuse next week because I'm tired of hearing this bull crap. I, sorry, I do not see women being abused. I, I don't see women, I don't see black women being physically abused. Never really have. I'm going to just say it. I never really have seen black women being abused. In my entire life, I have known. So he is lending, lending anecdotal evidence to his position by saying, you know, as an elderly man, as a man who is almost old enough to have died alone, like he tells so many women, in all these years that I've lived, in all my gray years, I've never seen a black woman who is being abused. Well, I would posit to him and to everyone else who buys this is because we die. We don't just get abused, we get killed. We don't just get a black eye. Look. Destiny Davenport is the beautiful woman that you're looking at right here. Um, and look, hashtag every six hours on Black Femicide America is to signify or to help you to be aware of the fact that every six hours a black woman is killed. Okay. And obviously not by the police. So Sunday, April 11th, 2021 in St. Louis, Missouri, just before 5 p.m. St. Louis police were called to the shooting to a shooting at the block of 3600 block of Virginia Avenue. Look. Destiny Davenport, 21 years old, wasn't breathing, ble breathing or conscious when they found her. 22-year-old Emmanuel Ross of St. Louis was believed to be the lone suspect. Further details are here. You can read that for yourself. Last one. Sunday, April 11th in Syracuse, New York, 11-month-old Dior DeJanae Harris. Killed just before 7 p.m. while riding in a car with her mother, another woman, and her two cousins. shooting at her. And the reason I know that this is a red candle is because at some point... What's that, Tim? What's that, Tim? Hang on. So the reason that I know that that is a Roman candle is because I am very much into pyromancy. And at one point in my life, when I was really very, um, you know, just young, angry, didn't understand a lot, instead of abusing other people, I would take out my frustrations on myself. And part of that destructive behavior included um, Roman candles, where I would literally sort of kind of risk my life. Uh, I would uh, lay on the ground, flat on the ground, with Roman candles in my mouth and shoot them off. 
one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other, to the point where my friends were like, if you've got a Roman candle, don't give it to chocolate. Don't give it to her. So that being said, I actually know Roman candles very well. Uh, they don't backfire very much. I'll, I'll say that much. Um, I've never burned anything uh, internally. Maybe I've, you know, caught on fire externally. I mean, even now, if you were to look uh, in my home, one, two, three, four, five, six, I have six candles burning right now. Like um, I'm an Aries. I am the flame. Right. So anecdotal evidence from my own life, that woman could have easily been set on fire. She's outside. There's nothing but what? What feeds fire? What feeds fire? Air. I have this candle from Lorraine Cozy Cafe. Shout out to her um, for all these beautiful candles that she makes. You can find her on the channel, uh, The Honest Truth. And you can also find her on uh, Roadrunner 89's channel. But part of what I love about these candles is that if you know anything about fire, you know that if you want to get rid of a flame, you don't have to touch it to snuff it out like I used to. Excuse me. You don't have to blow on it. Sometimes you'll notice that you blow a candle out and um, it doesn't go. You have to blow it like really hard a few times. You, you snuff it out. You, you cover it. You suffocate the candle or the flame, excuse me by denying it oxygen. So he's shooting her in highly flammable clothing and weave, apparently. He could have easily set that woman on fire. Easily third degree burns. That Roman candle shoots, you know that song, goodness, gracious, great balls of fire. That thing shoots balls of fire. It's not a toy. And the men, just like the woman, uh, the sister who was uh, hit in the face with that skateboard incredibly hard until she was like blacked out. The men are filming, laughing. One guy, hey, ho, hey, ho, hey, ho, hey, because it's funny, right? Because it's a burning weave. It's, it's a spectacle, right? So... Here I tagged, you know, all the 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 pro bliggity blacks, which um, I know nothing is going to happen. OK, I know that they're not going to speak about it against it or whatever, because they don't like anything that makes black men look like. Um, well, what these guys actually are. OK. <sighs> but how many of us come from a hood where we know things like this is common? How many of us come from a hood where, you know, a black teenage boy gets his hand on a BB gun and he can't stop shooting people with it? And it's like, hey, those BBs hurt. Hey, those BBs killed a turkey. Hey, those BBs, everywhere I got hit, I know everywhere I was hit with a BB, my skin came off. So I would get hit down to the white meat with these uh, little BBs from the BB gun. And I'm just like, stop hitting me. It hurts so bad. My skin is coming off. But no. And it's like, oh, you know, they come from this. And I have to say, um, I have to give a really nice, warm shout out to Alexis Exodus, the leader of the Black Woman Exodus, because um, I saw this on her channel. Now, I do follow um, Black Femside America, but um, I saw this video on her chat, her channel and um, she's an actually uh, divested woman, right? So, um I obviously highly sympathize with divested women, but um, for my own reasons, I'm starting to realize that I may or may not qualify. Um, credit this to what you want to, but even though I understand that, um, or even though I am fairly critical of African-American men in my content, I am surrounded by good, good black men. And I know that with a divested woman, they're like, there's no such thing. And um, my life is a living contradiction to that. And so I obviously don't belong in the realm of that kind of rhetoric. However, I'm still a black woman and I'm still pro black woman at the end of the day. So I'm still pro those women and their success and their safety. Okay. 
So he doesn't know any women who have ever been abused. So he might look at that and say, hey, they were just they were just playing. And what did she do wrong? What did she do to deserve that, right? It's how it goes. So we don't know any abused black women, right? We don't know any. So um, as of today, 689 black women and girls have been killed. And this is uh, this year. All right, so here we have a woman who, and hey, this kind of adds to my point. Um, I have some noble white men's phone number saved in my phone. It's a platonic relationship. Nothing sexual has happened. And I mean, I worry about, because some of the women of the divestment community, God, they're so intelligent. They're so bright. They're just so a creme de la creme and then you have those who are the mirror image of the manosphere where they just have so much hatred in their heart right that they um and and i'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say hatred is a bad thing not gonna do that right um but it's to the point where it's so corrosive that they behave like the black manosphere and they make excuses for brad when there isn't one Right. Because at the end of the day, we have a problem still as African-American women with racism, white supremacy. We're still black. Devastated or not. Swirler or not. We're, we're still black. So you have this woman who. Many black men would say, well, she got what she deserved because she's with Brad. So. We have this woman. That guy looks pretty damn black, pretty damn authentically black. Um, this happened in Hammond, Indiana. This is Monica Mills, she was 43. She was found with a gunshot wound. And this is her boyfriend, Mark J. Halliburton, 38 years old, charged with murder and unlawful possession of a firearm by a serious violent felon. So in her case, you know, you'd have the guys say, well, he's a felon, why didn't you choose better? Well, maybe she didn't choose better because our community and our culture tells black women, do not leave black men behind, do not forget them, do not become successful and forget who you belong to. Give that brother a chance. You know the white man is on his back. Give him a chance, you don't know. Maybe he could be the best thing, you know, you ever had. This is the, and plus, you know, she's in her 40s, so it kind of makes sense that she would be cultured in that way because, again, she's Gen X. And the breaking of the writer die chick and the pygmy truly belongs uh, to the millennial and the Gen Z black women. <sighs> Delois Brown, 73 years old, struck by a stray bullet. Shreveport, Louisiana. There's a shooting. 29-year-old Hannah Panice Sheffield was shot while driving and subsequently crashed her car. And this is the man responsible. Can't say that that was, you know, racism, white supremacy. It's not a white guy. Let's see. Houston, Texas. 19-year-old Carianta Jones. Jones was caught in a crossfire and pronounced dead on the scene. She was not involved in the altercation. Police are still searching for two suspects. Brianna Taylor, who managed her sweetheart, Jessica X, called a trap queen the day after she died. And you know, all those African-Americans loved it. They loved it. The day after she died, called her a trap queen as if she earned and deserved the way that she died. That's hatred. That's not, I have best intentions for you and I just want you to, you know, do better. That's actual hatred. Uh, Simone Hill, Chicago, not surprised. Chirac, um, 29 years old, struck in the back and each arm taken to Mount Sinai Hospital where she was pronounced dead, police said. No suspects have been arrested. Looks like we have two brothers who are responsible for the death of this woman. 
uh, Sandra Mullen Coakley, shot on Piranha Street. And here is 19 year old Tyson Tyree Tucker. He was arrested on April 22nd. He was charged with murder and Tramel Jerome Bowens. He surrendered himself to the North Charleston Police Department and US Marshals. <sighs> Chanel Patterson, domestic violence. Eric Lipford, 33 years old, shot his girlfriend, Chanel Patterson, 31 years old, uh, early Saturday morning at the Bridgepoint Hotel and Marina, right in front of their child. Candace Cooks, pretty little girl. Um, let's see, this is in Las Vegas, Nevada. 27-year-old Candace Cooks um, had a gunshot wound to her back. 30-year-old Kevin Osborne dropped um, Cooks off at the hospital and said he was her boyfriend, which was not true. <sighs> he shot her. So, again, Fresno, California, DeAndre Foster shot and killed his girlfriend, 21-year-old Charlotte Etheridge. So when this dating marriage guru, whose marriages combined, his two marriages didn't last for three years, is telling the masses with his gigantic ASS channel that I've never seen a black woman go through domestic violence, honey, it's because we're dead. We're dead or keeping it a secret. Or we're like that woman you were talking about in the 70s who, well, she hit him back, so it can't be domestic violence. If she hit him back and, and emotional abuse, you know, it goes to, you know, from black woman to, to black men. You don't think colorism and is emotional abuse? You know, there's a strange thing that I want to say. Let me go back to the screen here, right? Because I'm from the place all the self-hating black men want to move to, right? Seattle. There's this thing, and I lost my trail of thought. Darn it. Um, typical of looking at something so uh, graphic, but if it comes back to me, I'll let you know. Um, but I was going to say, I remember now, you see how this girl has all this weave in her hair and all these big old hoop earrings? You think we do that for white men or black men? Because the swirlers either are natural or they have a natural looking weave. The black women who are with white men, they're not in platinum blonde and royal blue wigs. They're not just like Saweetie. They're not just like Megan. They're not just like Nikki. Some of them, they look like Macy Gray, Tracy Chapman, Crystal and Karazin. Very natural. You want to talk emotional abuse? The result of our emotional abuse is part of our culture. Where it's such a bad thing to be black that, that we purchase accessories and things and lashes in order to look anything but. That we lie about our ethnicity. There are so many people on and off YouTube who are walking around pretending to be this and that. And it's like, girl, no, you're not. I posted my DNA results. It's still on my Instagram. So when I say I am, you know, whatever, I am. But so many women are lying about that because they want clout with black men. You don't think that's emotional and psychological abuse? That you can't even be your own color and be seen as attractive? I can sit down, right, because I'm a, I'm a globe trotter and I've learned several languages. I can sit down and, and just say that I'm African-American to an African-American guy and the same type of men... I can speak in an Arabic accent or something else. And oh, I'll be so interesting and so much more beautiful for being an exotical, right? So we don't know any black women who are abused, right? Isn't that what that, uh, that black guy said? Um, 
that dating girl or guy. He doesn't know any black women who have been abused. And this is the color purpling of the African-American community. And this is slander. <sighs> All right. Who are they? LaShawn Thompson Beal. Ali Burl Beal, 27, is charged with aggregated murder and lesser offenses in the shooting, oh God, of her 56-year-old mother, LaShawn Thompson Beal. LaShawn's son found her dead inside of her home in the city's North Shore, Collinwood area. Now, here's what I'll say about this. This girl, this killer, she looks like a killer. She looks like her frontal lobe capacity. Like you see how she's got that low sloping head. She looks like she doesn't have a whole lot of emotional intelligence or even just, just intelligence as a just period. She looks like there's something wrong with her. But um, since I don't know the story, let's see, we have um, a little bit more of the story. She crashed her mom's car, $3,000 in damage. Um, Mathis, wow, so they were on the Judge Mathis TV show. They argued over a sandwich. Wow. So here's the deal. I'll just go and say another reason, right? Because I'm not going to front because it's, these are women. Not going to do that. Not going to do that. Part of the reason I do not feel that I qualify as a divested or as a pro black is because of the hatred that some women who are black women have for other black women, especially if they are a little different sounding looking. My partner just actually gave me this bargain. Um, it's a collector's item that was taken off the shelf. But I love her because she is what I was accused of being. Um, and I've been isolated by um, I would say the majority of African-American women, and this is why I always pay homage to um, mixed women, exoticals, and non-black women, because in, for me in my life, these are the women who took me in and validated me. However, there's no way that just because that is a reality, I'm going to then lie on, betray, or abandon the experiences of black women, because I am one. All right, Tamika Eakins, um, Friday, April 9th, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 25-year-old Byron McDonald shot and killed 50-year-old Tamara Eakins and 25-year-old Morgan Braxton. That does not look like a 50-year-old woman. All right, so he shot both of these women. Columbus, Ohio, not surprising. It's damn ghetto. Um, she was a young scholar. She went to Ohio State. She started her own business. She was a loving person, says Ray Riggins, uh, Sade Payne's friend. Um, it's a cold case, and I don't think they're ever going to find her killer. Derek Dabney, 20-year-old from Richmond, was charged with the murder and use of a firearm. He shot Ashley Wilbert and killed her. She was 21 years old. Oh, look at her in her red, black, and green. You know, pro-black, possible pick me with a man with dreads. I know that used to be me and my flow. All right, blue hair, blue hair for black men, because that's not a, a hairstyle for black women who like white guys. It doesn't happen that way. So she was trying to get picked by, well, him. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, four people were shot. Jeffrey Vaughn from Milwaukee. Um, wow. Wow. Look, you can go and read um, up and down this channel at your own risk. The killer is always on the side. The victims are always on the side. 
So if you don't know any black women, right? So I love black men hairstyle. Wow. Sorry, this doesn't look like like every photo you see of a guy from the Black Manuscript Post. All right, so when it's a single photo like that, that means a killer hasn't been found. I love black men hairstyle. And we love these hairstyles. It's just that hairstyles do con uh, convey a certain kind of personality and um, Hear me out because my favorite hairstyle of Lord, Chloe, Halle Bailey with those locks. And for me, I, I love faux locks. I might have some faux locks in a couple of weeks actually, um, but there is still um, a certain way to look. And this is, um, how do I say this? There is a physical appearance that a black woman can have that signifies, don't touch me. I don't do this kind of culture. I don't do the, these kinds of experiences. There are certain things that you can wear uh, shoes, for example, like, you know, you can get rid of your Air Force Ones and K-Swiss and trade them for, let me see if I can go get a shoe really quickly. Um, and hear me out, I'm still with a black man, but however, I very much look like, uh, I think I very much look like and give Swirler. So I'm gonna go on ahead and just stop my camera really quickly. I guess these aren't really the best example, but I mean, because it's summer, so things from the summer kind of look a little, you know, a little bit more universal as opposed to what people are wearing in that. Um, so by all means, if you've got some big, like I, I love Adidas, but if you got some big Adidas hair, you know, certain black men will think that you're available to them. If you've got an Air Force Ones and Jordans, a certain class of black men will believe that you are available to them. There's literally a way of looking that makes you look like she's uppity or she's a sellout. She's an Oreo. She doesn't like um, black men. And it's not that you don't have to, it's not about not liking black men, it's about not attracting a certain class of um, black men who do these things. So anyhow, I really don't even wanna belabor the point. I can just really keep clicking, 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 and seeing who the majority of these killers are. I did a story on um, this woman. It really broke my heart because she's a Delta. She was really young and um, our lives are way too similar. So it's uh, her story was very eerie for me and it's still, um, it's still up on my channel, but uh, she must have knew this guy for a week and, and saw him for maybe three days out of that week and he just went crazy and kill, killed her. Tell me somebody would say that that's just a normal black guy. Literally somebody from her family was just like, you know, if you call the police on him again, it's gonna be problems, blah, 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 snitching this and that. Cost her her life. So again, <laughs> We could keep doing this, but um, you can actually do this on your own. So again, shout out to Black Femside America. Uh, her cash app is dollar sign Black Femside US. Really try to support this woman because she's doing the work that other others among us are too busy or you know too obligated with other things to do to uh, perform. It's a necessary work that she is doing here by documenting these deaths. And I would say to African-American women, start calling the cops and start reporting these things because you have these people taking the fact that you're willing not to snitch, taking the fact that you're willing to hide it and recant, and then using it against you on a platform to say, look, who, who's doing what to black women? Who's doing what to them? Nothing's happening. Where? So for the rest of our sake, snitch.
for the rest of our sake, call the police. For the rest of our sake, tell. This woman getting shot with the firecrackers, I really wish she would have made at least a police report. Wasn't okay, wasn't a game, wasn't funny. But this is the life of a black woman where you are constantly going through gaslighting for, because nobody believes in your victimhood. Nobody believes that you are even able to be a victim. And I'm sorry, you know, that's not just black men. It's, it's not just black men who believe that way. There are a lot of people in and outside of our cultural group who believe that about us. Uh, and some of us don't have the capacity or the time to work on that front, but clearly Black Film Side USA does. So uh, this is all I have on this. Uh, please like, share, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or anything that you would like to see spoken about on this channel, um, go on ahead and leave it in the comment section below. I thank you so much for being here. Um, warm greetings to Mocha Mommy. I am watching you like before my eyes just come up in this world of um, YouTube and it warms my heart because um, not a whole lot of character out here like yours. I appreciate your sincerity. All right, everybody, uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. I am uppity and I am out. You know